If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. All right, guys, welcome back to another deck profile. Today, we got more premium content, and I'm going to be showing off my premium Blasters deck uh, featuring um, some support from DBT04. So this is before we get the rest of the Blaster support or, you know, that support coming in DBT05. So this is basically how the deck is going to be for now until then. So starting off with our starter, Wingle Brave. So I was using Glime in previous builds, but I decided to go back to Wingle Brave just because I need um, a better way to search out blasters since I'm not running um, Wingle Brave the, the grade one in the deck. So I'm using Wingle Brave the grade zero because it still has pretty good on hit pressure and it's still helpful to find whatever target you're looking for. So, Throw back to 2012 Vanguard, am I right? <laughs> All right, going on to grade threes, our main right of the whole deck is gonna be Majesty Lord Blaster, so I'm running it at four. So Majesty Lord Blaster's first skill is if you have Blaster Blade and Blaster Dark in the soul, this gets an extra crit, and if it's on the Vanguard circle, it gets 5K and an extra drive check, so it gets triple drive. The second skill is when it attacks, you put two of your rearguards into the soul and you get two imaginary gifts. So the whole goal of the deck is to um, stack your gifts onto one circle as much as you can to kind of make your blaster blade really, really big and swing with it with flow goals or alternatively just stacking force markers to your front row as much as you can and just making really big numbers and extra drive checks and extra crit from your vanguard is a lot of pressure so that's kind of like the goal of the deck is to use MLB's skill to make really strong columns and then have crit pressure from the vanguard so that's it for MLB going on to our next grade three is our heal guardian innocent ray dragon so innocent ray like the other heal guardians is when it's placed on guard if you haven't ridden to grade three you pick one of the following. You give your Vanguard 10k for the rest of the turn, or you choose one of your opponent's attacking units that gets minus two crit till the end of the battle. Um, and then its second skill is when it's placed on rear from hand. If you don't have a face-up card in your damage zone, you call this from hand, put the top card deck into the damage zone, and then that's it. You have a damage now. It's if you have no damage. Sorry, almost made a mistake. So it's really helpful in premium because damage damage denial is a way to play the game just so that your opponent can't have resources to work right from the get-go but that's where heal guardians help you call a heal guardian and then you have a damage to work with but for the most part this deck can get away without using any damage for skill costs so that's another thing that i actually really like about this deck but yeah heal guardians it's a great three so you can discard it for stride and it's a heal so you can discard it for g guards so Heal Guardians are great for premium. <clears throat> Lastly, for grade threes, one copy of this common card from DBT04. It's a Blitz Order for Blasters. It's choose one of your Vanguards or Blaster in its name that's being attacked. It gets 15k power. And then you can choose one of your Rearguards and retire it, and you can give your Vanguard another 15k. So it's like a 15k shield, kind of like a trigger, but additionally, if you want that extra 15, kind of like a crit sentinel, you can retire a rear guard for that. So I like it because it's an easy shield. Um, it helps if like you're battling against something that says, that has a guard restrict, that's like, oh, when you guard, you must call two or more to the guard circle. Well, blitz orders aren't really placed in the circle. They're just being called to the order zone. So, you know, you're just casting a spell, so to speak. So you're not calling units. So that's what I like about it, and it's a grade three, so you can use it for stride cost if you need to. But I'm only running it at one because I feel like it does get kind of cluttered with the rest of the deck, and you want your deck to be a little more consistent with searching. So now we're moving on to grade twos. Our MVP of the deck is good old Blaster Blade from V Series. Blaster Blade's first skill is Van only. If you have four rear guards, this gets a crit. And the second skill is Vanner Rear when placed. Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1. Choose one of your opponent's front row units and retire it. So has a retire skill, gains a crit um, if you ride it. So 
it's pretty decent. You really don't use the counter blast too often in this deck, so you can find yourself using Blast Blade skill to retire a front row unit, which can be helpful. Um, but we're mostly using it because we need Blast Blade in the soul, it's searchable, and Floral Pallet and Flogal restands Blaster Blades, so want to run for that. Next up for our grade twos is another four of a staple, Blaster Dark. Uh, V-Series, Blaster Dark's first skills when it's placed on van or rear, counter blast one, your opponent chooses a rear guard and they retire it. Um, the second skill is act once per turn. You can discard a card from your hand. If your opponent has no rear guards, this gets an extra drive check. So usually in the early game, your opponent isn't calling a board anyway, so they usually have no rear guards. And you can use this to make it really easy to just get twin drive, filter for cards in your deck, get critic, extra critical triggers if you want to, and then also, obviously, you need it for MLB skill to have it in the soul to get that extra drive check and that power and that crit, etc. So Blaster Dark's a great skill and if, has a great skill, and if your opponent's running four runners, you can use a Counter Blast to kill off those as well, if that's their only rear guard. So Blaster Dark has a lot of versatility outside of just being a soul feeder for MLB. Next up, four grade twos, Star Call Trumpeter. Star Call Trumpeter skills when it's placed on van or rear. You counter blast one, soul blast one, and you return a unit, you return a card with blaster and the order when light and darkness intersects from your drop zone to your hand. So even if you have only one of the two, you can still do the skill and grab the one. So it's decent if you have to ride this and you have like bark blaster flying spark in the soul you soul blast it counter blast and then you add it back to your hand so you get something out of it uh the second skill is the most important part about it too is that it's if you have a vanguard blaster in its name this gets boost so you have a 10k booster and you have a way to recycle your blasters and put them back into your hand so definite four of and if we're running the order card too so it recycles the order so i definitely think this card is great at four moving on to one of my favorite Royal Paladin cards in the game, Absolute Blade Light Livero. So Livero's skill is when it's placed from hand, you kind of blast one, and you search your deck um, for up to one grade two card and call it to an open rear guard circle, and you shuffle your deck. If you don't have a face-up card in your damage zone, you can soul blast instead. So the, one of my favorite things about this card is that you don't have to pay the counter blast if you don't have the face-up damage, so if your opponent's damage denying you, you can Soul Blast instead, or if you wasted all your Counter Blast for Blaster Blade and other card effects, you can still use Livero to search out stuff. So I love that Livero is accessible either way. The main targets are obviously Blaster Blade and Blaster Dark because you need them to be in the soul for MLB, so Livero is a great card. And next up for grade twos, two copies of favorite people of light and dark Lou. this card used to be like a four up staple back in the g era days so this card is still pretty decent today and let's just go on to the skill it's when it's being boosted by blaster friend barkle or floral pallet and flogel and it gets an extra 3k when it is and it gets an additional skill which is auto at the end of the battle that this attacked um a vanguard you counter blast one, search your deck for a grade two with blaster in its name, call it to rear, and that called unit gets 3k. So if it's being boosted by blaster from Barkle, you shove this to soul, call blaster blade, you get that counter charge from Barkle, or if you have Flogel on the on the board, you have a way to restand your blaster blade. So the obvious target is blaster blade, but if you don't have blaster blade or blaster dark, you need to find a way to pull them out. Lou is just an extra way to do that. And additionally, with Saint Twin Sword, um, the effect where it gives units an extra five, 5k when it's called from the deck for every face-up card in your G-Zone, Lou calls from the deck, so it would proc that ability, meaning when you call Blaster Blade, it's going to get that power from Saint Twin Sword. So I like Lou for the Saint Twin Sword turn as a call target when it calls it off, when Twin Sword calls it off from the deck, and it just helps you also just search out your blasters. Um, Decent at two, just because, you know, it's really easy to guard a 19k column these days, so it's like, I'd rather have 
search like cards that are easier to search out stuff during the main phase, like Livero and Trumpeter, just so that I can guarantee my targets. All right. Lastly, for grade twos, when light and darkness intersects, I still hate the way that <laughs> that's worded. Uh, you activate this um, this based on one of the following. So it's one of three things. It's if you have Blaster Blade on Banner Rear, you search for Blaster Dark. Or if you have Blaster Dark on Banner Rear, you search for Blaster Blade. Then if you have Blaster Blade and Blaster Dark on the board, you can use this search for Majesty Lord Blaster. So it's a super soldier, <laughs> super searcher, almost said super soldier. Um, so if you ride Blaster Dark, you activate the order, you search Blaster Blade, and then you know you can go from there, or you call both, use the order to find your grade three, and then you have your MLB for you know the rest of the game. Wingle Brave is mostly there for these searches as well, but it, it helps you deck thin and doesn't cost anything, so might as well. And it's recyclable if you use Star Call Trumpeter. So there you have it, the one copy of the order. All right, and now we're moving on to the great ones. Starting off, four of our Blaster Friend Barkgul. Blaster Friend Barkgul's skill is when your Blaster Blade is placed on van or rear in the same column as this, you if you have a Vanguard Blaster in the same, you counter charge one. So it's just counter charge. It's mostly there for the Blaster name and also for the fact that it's in plot included in the cost for Lou, so you can use it for that but it's mostly the go-to ride if you're going second because you want to hit with the blaster vanguard to proc off wingle brave and search out your blaster so that's one of the main reasons we're running it at four still a staple card in the uh, premium g era blaster deck uh, next up we're running a new card uh, this was for the d deck in Keter Sanctuary for PBD. It's when this unit is placed on rear from hand, if you have a Vanguard Blaster in its name, discard a card from your hand, and you look at the top two cards of your deck, call them to rear guard circles as rest, um, and then you discard the rest. So you can call one and discard the other, um, or call both. The idea of why I'm running this is because this gets you your fodder for MLB, because MLB says you can put any two rear guards in the soul. So you call this, discard a card, look at top two, call them. It doesn't matter what they are, um, even if they don't really help you in that situation. You can just suck them to soul with MLB and give more force markers to your front two rear guards. So I'm running it for that, just for super easy field building. And you can also use it for Blaster Blade. If you ride Blaster Blade, call this get two more rear guards, you can help Blaster Blade get an extra crit for that turn if you want to. So there's some good field building going on with this card, and that's why I like it. It kind of just helps you accelerate your MLB turn to get those force markers. And uh, next up, instead of running a fourth copy of that card, I'm running the one copy of Sicilis uh, because it's the only grade one that I have in the deck that's from V-Series that has the 10k shield. So I want it to be a search target when I'm using um, Marin if I don't have any PGs. And also, it's a grade three searcher. So I can write it, look at top five, add a grade three, easy. Uh, it searches MLB and it also searches um, Heal Guardians, which is really helpful. So I like it for those reasons. And I mean, the only other alternative I could see would be Wingo Brave, but I would prefer to have a search that I can do that's during the main phase that's not really an on hit. So those are my real reasons for that. So the one copy works out fine for me. And next up for grade ones, two copies of the grade one VPG. Uh, what is your name? Irina. So Irina's first skill is the, the Sentinel skill, which is when you when placed. Discard a card from your hand and choose one of your units and it cannot be hit to the end of the battle. Its second skill is when it's placed on the Vanguard Circle, you draw a card, then you discard a card from your hand. So the reason we're running Grade 1 PGs in this deck is because Marin is a G guard that searches Grade 1s or higher from your deck and calls them the Guard Circle. This just says when placed, not when placed from hand, 
meaning you can activate it when you call it out with Marin. So if you're in a situation where, you know, you can't call Sentinels from hand or you, you know, have to guard with multiple cards from hand, you can just G-guard, call out the PG, and then that can save you. So that's why, that's why I like this PG a lot. And it also has a write ability. So if you need to write it for your grade one lineup, it's there. But it's mostly there for the Marin search. All right, I believe we are now moving on to triggers. Starting off, um, we're not running uh, Ultima, so we're running Armata Noa. Armata Noa is our over trigger. Its additional effect is when this is revealed during your drive check, your rear guards can now perform drive checks. So it's a little underwhelming in this deck because we don't really run grade three rear guards, so they're not going to be getting off twin drives, but it's fine. It's just mostly for the fact that the Cray Elemental one gets kind of shut down during your Crystal Luster MLB turns if you have to suck up uh, one of your front row units because then the only two things getting the 100 mil of your van and your other rear guard. Most of the time, people are either going to PG your vanguard or take it, so the 100 mil doesn't really do anything for the vanguard. So I like Armand to know it because if you give your rear guard the ability to drive check, it's just an extra card in your hand. And additionally, if you have Blaster Blade as your extra rear guard and you re keep restanding it with Floral Pout and Flogel, it gets to keep drive checking because it's technically not being restood by a stand trigger, it's being restood by a card effect. So it keeps drive checking over and over every time it attacks. So there's that. And also, if you drive check this during the St. Twin Sword turn, you get two extra drive checks. So doesn't really hurt. So I, li I like the Aramata Noah in the deck. Moving on, our other two Sentinels, which is our draw PGs, Flash Shield Assault. When placed, discard a card from hand, and a unit can't be hit. It's a draw PG. Draw PGs are great in general. I've loved draw PGs since they've come out because it just frees up PG space in the grade one lineup. Um, but yeah, it's just because, you know, we're running the grade one PGs because they're searchable, so we're running the draw PGs because they're triggers and they're sentinels. Draws are great. Now moving on to our other triggers, floor floor copies of Floral Pout and Flogel. <laughs> uh, it's a 5k trigger with 10k shield from the G era. Its skill is at the end of the battle that your unit named that your rear guard named Blaster Blade attacked, um, attacked a Vanguard specifically, you can blast one, choose your Blaster Blade rear guard, restand it, put this back into your deck. So it's if you have like a board full of these, theoretically, you can just keep paying Counter Blast and restanding that Blaster Blade over and over. So that's why you want to stack Force Markers on one circle so that the Blaster Blade goes on that circle and it's just swinging for a bunch of power over and over with the Floral Pout and Flogels. Um, it's also helpful with Lou as a booster to get off Lou's skill. And it's a crit, and crits win games. So we're running four copies of it. Next up, four copies of Scent Flare Draco Kid. This is our Stride Fodder crit. So its skill is hand continuous when you pay the cost for stride. This gets grade plus three, so you can discard it for stride. We only run nine grade threes in the main deck and no other forms of Stride Fodder, so you definitely want to run four of this in the MLB deck because you want to stride <laughs> when you're playing MLB, for sure. So four of this crit, absolutely 100%. And then my last crit, or my last trigger in the deck, is my one copy of Amulet Pure Eagle. It's a GV1 crit. It's when your Vanguard attacks. You put this to soul, choose your Vanguard against 10k, and you draw. It's mostly just because it's a 10k crit with 15 shield and it you know has effect has an effect instead of just being a vanilla crit so it's a really weird ratio but you really do need the stride fodder crit so this is just kind of like what the remainder ends up being um you would probably be if you weren't running the over trigger and you're running ultima instead you would just run a second one of these and then get rid of the over trigger so that is it for our trigger lineup now we move on to the fun part which is the g zone Two copies of Crystal Luster Dragon. Crystal Luster's main thing is act. Once per turn, flip a unit in your G-Zone face up, and this unit gets the 
copies the ability of your heart. So now you have Majesty Lord Blaster's skill active while you're on a G unit, which means you have quad drive, you have the ability to shove two things a soul, get markers, you have a crit, and you know, it, it's just going from there. The second skill, GB3, if the number of grade two or greater rear guards you have is three or more, um, when your opponent would call cards from their hand, they have to guard with three at a time. So that's another reason why we have Starcall Trumpeter, because Starcall Trumpeter is a booster as a grade two. So if you have three grade twos, one of them is a booster. Every time something attacks, your opponent has to block with three or more. And if you're restanding with Floral Pallet and Flogol, you're that they're attacking and poking again, and they have to keep guarding with three or more. Uh, and also because you're cloning MLB, this has a crit, so it swings with a crit, and your opponent has to block with three or more instead of just calling the PG. So the GB3 can be a super easy kill turn, which is another reason why Crystal Luster is such a good card for the deck. It can also flip anything, so I don't think you need four copies, but if you have the four copies, sure, go for it. Um, but you're pretty much only going to stride maybe two to three times during the game, two being the Crystal Luster, the last being either Twin Sword or, like, in my case, GB8. So the two copies work fine for me. All right, speaking of Twin Sword, I'm running two copies of Saint Twin Sword. Saint Twin Sword's skill is when it attacks a Vanguard while boosted, you cannon blast one, choose any unit in your G zone, turn it face up, and you search your deck for two grade twos and you call them to rearguard circle. Super simple. The second skill is when your rearguard is placed from the deck, that unit gets 5k for every face up card in your G zone. So this activates with Lou, this activates with Livero. Um, its own skill when it attacks and calls two grade twos, those get a bunch of power. So this is also a kill card for sure. Um, and because you can flip anything, I only think you need two copies because you're only going to go into it maybe just twice max. Um, but yeah, um, if you want, you can definitely drop some stuff in the G zone that I'm running to run more copies of this if you want, but it's up to you ultimately. Next up. Two copies of Aerial Divine Knight Alt Mile, uh, OG, OG Alt Mile. Uh, its skill is super simple. It's when it's placed on the van, when it's strode onto the Vanguard Circle, you turn a copy of itself face up, and then your front row gets 3k. Then, if you have um, two or more in your G zone face up, you search your deck for a grade two, call it, it gets 5k. So it's this is mostly just if you don't have counterblast and your opponent is denying you counterblast, so you can't really twin sword, and for whatever reason you can't go into crystal luster, like maybe use both copies and you're like, oh no, I need something else. Or maybe you're like, oh no, like I just need to search out blaster blade and I don't have counterblast and crystal luster isn't helpful here. You can go into Aerial Divine Knight. It's a free call. Calls out anything from the deck that's a grade two. So I feel like it's a good toolboxy card to run. And if you don't feel like you need it, you can just flip it as flip fodder for Twin Sword and Crystal Luster. So yeah. Next up, two copies of Alfred Holy Saver. This one is like definitely optional. I would say you definitely don't need this card in the deck. You could definitely run <clears throat> an extra Crystal Luster and an extra Saint Twin Sword instead of this if you want more consistency. However, I just really like Alfred as a G unit to run in the deck because it lets you get five drive checks and we're running over triggers. So its skill is GB2, act, count of us one, choose a face down copy of this unit, turn it face up, and if you have a heart with Blaster or Alfred, you choose one of your rearguards Blaster Blade and you give it 3k and during its first battle, it twin drives. So if you swing with Alfred and you get, you know, your triple drive and then you get the over trigger, you can give now that rearguard Blaster Blade after that first battle and you restand it with Flogel, it's going to get single drive. So the idea is that you can threaten your opponent with extra drive checks swinging with that blaster blade with twin drive which can be a kill turn um it's kind of underwhelming these days especially with all the defensive mechanics that premium decks can do so i can understand if you would rather run two more crystal luster instead but 
I just like Alfred early because if you do get the over trigger within those five drive checks, it's a fun time. Okay. Next, two copies of Gansalot Peace Saver. Uh, these are mostly flip fodder, but you can stride it if you want to. Its first skill is when it attacks, if you have a heart with Alfred or Blaster, you counter charge when it attacks. And at, and then until the end of the battle, it gets drive plus one. So it gets quad drive for free. Then if you have a face of card in your G zone, this gets a crit. So this is kind of redundant just because if you're copying MLB skill Crystal Luster, it's gonna get quad drive and a crit anyways. It just gets now the extra skill of sucking two rear guard and getting two force markers. So you're pretty much never gonna stride into this. It's the second skill that's important. It's G zone face up. During your turn, um, your blaster blades have resist, meaning your opponent can't denial griffin you, no header around, no negro lazy or negro whatever it's called to cannoneer, retire your blaster blade with grand blue. Not gonna happen, thanks to Peace Saver. So that's just more like your go-to flip fodder. You go into the crystal luster, you flip Gancelot immediately. The second copy is for more flip fodder, and if for whatever reason, you want to stride into it, you can. It's there. Um, you could definitely just drop this for another Saint Twin Sword if you want. Um, but other than that, it's just mostly there. It's flip fodder and the accessibility of, oh, you know what, maybe I will stride into against a lot and then, you know, swing just to get the counter charge, you know? Like, if you're like, oh, man, I need one more counter blast to pull off my Flogal turn, we'll just go into Peace Saver and then counter charge when it attacks. So... The options are there. And lastly for our G unit, our GB8, which is uh, uh, Albius Avalon. So what Albius does is GB8, counter blast one, when it attacks a Vanguard, you search your deck for up to five cards, call them, they get 4K, this gets a crit. So it builds you a board on attack. The power and is kind of whatever. It's mostly a fact that if you're at GB8 and you're like, oh, like I can just call a board full of uh, Floral Pout and Flogals if I want, you can do that. Um, there's that whole thing too where if you have two Blaster Friend Barkles in the same column and you call a Blaster Blade, you counter charge two instead of just the one. So you can kind of combo that off with Avalon as well as your kill turn. So that's why I like Avalon. It's my alternative to Ultima since we're running the over trigger. Like I said, you can run Ultima instead of this, and then instead of the, the over trigger, run another crit. By all means, whatever feels better. Now we're on to G Guardians. Bear with me. Maskol, GB1 when placed on the when uh, GB1 and flip a G Guardian. Sorry, when placed on the when called to the Guardian Circle, you pay the cost. And if you have a front row unit, this gets an extra 10k. So this is mostly just to kind of feed into your GBs because both Avalon and Saint Twin Sword benefit the more face-up cards in your G-Zone you have. So that's why we're running two. Then I'm running two copies of Little Great Sage Marin. Uh, Marin is the one that calls out the PG to the guard circle, but its exact skill is when it's placed on guard, if your vanguard is Alfred or Blaster, Soul Blast 1, search for the grade 1 or greater card, call it to guard, it gets an extra 5k shield until the end of battle. So... Same thing with um, Sisilis as our one grade one with 10k shield. You call it from deck, it's a 15k shield in addition to Marin. So Marin is a great G guard. Definitely been using this for the longest time since Blasters have been in, in G. And our last G guardian is Laser Guard Dragon. I have Laser Guard Dragon instead of other stuff like Dismal or the other G guard that gives plus 10k if you have two grade twos. I like this one just because even if your opponent blows up your front row, there is a high chance you have a grade two in your back row like Star Call Trumpeter. Uh, what Laser Guard does is when it's placed on guard, if you have a grade two, if you have one or more grade twos, it gets 5k shield. It's a super simple 5k shield, but it can still activate if you can't do Maskell because they have nothing in the front row and you can't do Marin for whatever reason, you know, like you used up both copies of Marin, so you, you need another G-Guard. Um, you can't really use Mass Gold. You have Laser Guard as an option. Um, other than that, Laser Guard is mostly just flip fodder for Mass Gold. So, to each their own. All right, we did it. We made it through the entire premium deck profile for Blasters. Um, 
thanks again for watching. If you have any ideas for this deck that you want to give, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.